Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to use DSX to plug in your PS4 controller and get it working so you can play games on any game that you have on your Windows PC. This includes on Steam, on Epic, on the Microsoft Store, wherever you get your game. If it has compatibility with controllers, this will take care of it so you can use your favorite PlayStation controller. That said, unlike a lot of the other solutions that I have on the channel, like DS4 or Windows, DSX requires you to pay for it. The basic package is just under $8 for $7.99. That covers your PlayStation controller for PlayStation 4. If you want some additional coverage so that it will allow you to plug in your PS5 controller, you'll need to pay an extra $5 on top of that for a total of $12.33 if you purchase the bundle right now. I guess it's 5% off, so maybe now's the time if you see this on sale to grab it. Uh, it's, it works pretty well as far as I can tell, but you'll have to be the judge. So if you buy that and you're ready to go to the next step, follow me over to the library. We're going to find DSX. I'm going to install it just to my C drives fine. And it's about 130 megabytes, 129, 130. It shouldn't take any time at all, no matter how slow your internet is to download this. And then after it's downloaded, we're going to run it and DSX will walk you through the process of installing any drivers that are missing that you still need to download. So we're going to go ahead and launch it. And then it's going to start all uh, maximized. It's going to scan your computer to see if you're missing anything. In this case, I'm missing the core driver that it needs to run, which is the virtual pad driver by Nefarious. If you're not familiar with Nefarious, he's the guy who made the open source Vision Bus driver that all the other free controller drivers have used for years in order to do what they do. So they are already very versed in making excellent controller drivers. So we're just going to click continue and I'm already familiar with them. So I'm going to agree. I've read the user license agreement and I'm going to click install. Now what's going to happen is once it's done downloading, it's going to ask you administrator permission to install. Go ahead and say yes. And this license agreement that you agreed to will pop up on your screen. This is the installer. It'll do its thing. It should only take a couple seconds. And then once this is done, you can start using your controller. I'll go ahead and give it administrator access again and it will tell me that it's been updated and DSX will have to restart, which is fine. It can do its thing. So DSX will close and it'll automatically restart and pop back open for you. And this is the screen that you should see when you're ready to plug in your controller. Now, right now, I, my controller is not plugged in because I wanted this to be dramatic, but this is what it looks like once it's ready and everything's set up and it's got all the drivers that it needs to do its thing. So now I'm gonna plug in my PS4 controller and it should pop up here in this window. And what's going on is it's giving you a readout of all of the pertinent information about this controller, it tells you what, how it's plugged in, what the power charge status is, if it's powered on, so it's completely powered on right now and what the polling rate or communication frequency is that it's currently going at. So it's talking back and forth to the controller at 250 Hertz. And at this point, if you see, if your screen looks like mine, you're good to go. You can just start playing games. You can also go through the sidebar here and you can set up custom settings profiles to adjust how everything behaves on this controller. I'll walk through parts of that in future tutorials. But for right now, you're good to go. If you're curious about some of the more information on what's going on here on the front page, the virtual device down here is what your controller is currently pretending to be. Native mode means that it's not pretending to be anything. Windows is only seeing a PS4 controller. And if there was support for PS4 controllers on Windows, we wouldn't need this software. So this is probably not going to do you much for very much. For the most part, what this software does, what most software for the PlayStation controllers do, 
to get them to work on Windows is they pretend to be an Xbox 360 controller. That's good. You want that. This will make sure that your game that this controller works for basically every single game. Now, if you know for certain that your game that you're playing has PS controller support, like say you're playing Helldivers, that one has PlayStation controller support. Helldivers 2, you can click DualShock 4 emulation and it will portray your controller as it is as a PlayStation 4 controller, or you can tell it if you pay for the expanded package, you can tell it that it's a PS5 controller too if you really want. You can also click on this. But the one that's gonna give you the most success is Xbox 360, but if you know it's got support, click this, it'll display PlayStation buttons. It's pretty simple and straightforward. For the most part though, Xbox is going to have the best chance of success. So if you try to emulate a PlayStation controller and it's not working, switch back to Xbox. There you go, pretty simple. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a brief look at how to get DSX working on your computer, plug in your controller and start playing with it. I hope you found this helpful. If your controller is not really showing up on your computer at all, like it's not even making the little sound that you plugged in a new device, you might have to reset your controller. If you flip that bad boy over and you look at the back side, there's a little hole on the right side next to a screw hole. You wanna stick a paper clip in there, there's a little button, press and hold it for like a count of 12 seconds and that'll factory reset your controller and then you can try plugging it back into your PC and seeing if it will behave that way. You can also use this in Bluetooth mode. I'm just not covering that in this tutorial. So I hope you found this helpful. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll catch you next time. Bye everybody and have a good one.